want to introduce you to Interceptor Ammunition. The Ballistic Machinist has been making the Interceptor round for a couple other calibers for a while now. Just coming out now with a 380 caliber and 75 grain. And uh, the Ballistic Gel performance has been uh, rather interesting. In fact, uh, I believe it's uh, Tau Fledermas, uh, however you pronounce that channel. We'll put a link in here somewhere to it. We'll be uh, uh, coming out with a ballistic or gel testing on this in the real near future. But my curiosity was because of the the different shape uh, of the projectile and the fact that it's a 75 grain projectile, uh, was it going to uh, function well in a variety of 380 pistols. So I dug out 16 different 380 pistols and ran them by the uh, lab radar to uh, to look at how they're going to perform, uh, what the velocities are, and we compared it with uh, the only other 380 defensive round I have a quantity of, and that's the Spear Gold Dot, a 90 grain hollow point. And as a control, we also looked at the PMC Bronze 90 grain full metal jacket just to see if there's any difference in uh, how they uh, they function in these 16 guns. But again, we also ran the, uh, all of these by the chronograph, and um, we'll go through them one at a time fairly quickly. I'll be speeding up the, uh, the shots, and by the way, uh, <laughs> my error, because the, uh, the weather was a little cold, I didn't take the time to check the focus on my camera, so uh, it is a little bit, um, it's, it's not as clear as I would like it to be. But we weren't looking for accuracy, although I was hitting 16-inch plates periodically at 50 yards with uh, some of these little guns. But the main thing is, uh, how well were they all going to perform, and what's the difference between the uh, energy of the Spear Gold Dot and the energy of the lighter uh, 380 Interceptor? So stay tuned, we're going to go through these. So we tested all 16 guns uh, on a fairly chilly day here in Michigan. Started out as 36 degrees, ended up at about 40, so it was chilly. Now bear in mind that uh, different uh, uh, elevations, our elevation here is about 890 feet above mean sea level, uh, different elevations will make a difference, different temperatures will make a difference in performance. So this is the performance out of my guns uh, at this particular um, elevation and at this particular temperature. So yours may vary, um, may even vary significantly depending again on altitude, temperature, and so forth, and even from gun to gun. All right, so we're going to start out with the Keltec P38T, I think that's how you uh, say it. Uh, kind of an interesting little gun, uh, just to see how it all worked. We had some fails with that, and this gun belonged to the owner of Ballistic Machinist, so he said it's been a pretty dirty gun, but we had some failures to fire with it, uh, as well as a failure to eject. And again, I'm going to blame that more on a dirty gun than anything else. But you can see the uh, the velocity, or the, actually the energy, on the uh, interceptor was about nine percent better than the, the gold dot, 175 pounds feet or foot pounds. Next, I put it. Now we did these uh, oriented by barrel length, starting out with a 2.7 inch barrel length of the Keltec, uh, the Breda Pico, and a couple others, going all the way up to 3.75 inches on the Rock Island Baby Rock. So we did these based on increasing barrel length just to see what the difference is going to be. So I put them through a Beretta Pico. I did a, I think I did a review on the Pico a while back, and I couldn't shoot this with the gloves on. Could not get the trigger all the way back. Um, I did have to, to tap the slide once with the interceptor, but again, I, all of my guns are you know, relatively dirty. But uh, other than that one tap, it did function about a 10% better energy with the interceptor uh, in the Pico compared to the Gold Dot. Moved up to the SIG 238, and i got to add a caveat here. Um, we had a problem with the 238. Uh, I had to uh, had a number of nose dives with the ammunition, with the uh, uh, interceptor ammunition. Um, even with a gold dot, I had to hit the slide once. This gun is dirty. I've shot it a lot and haven't taken the time to clean it. I did briefly lube the rails, but that's all I did. So we had some problems with it. Uh, it did come out with about a 16% uh, better uh, energy excuse me, 13% better energy uh, than the Gold Dot at 203 foot-pounds. But I did a follow-up on this, and I'm going to roll that in briefly uh, with no chronograph results or anything, just a function results. Today i got a SIG magazine with seven interceptors loaded up in the 238 magazine, and it chambered the first one with no problem. I did clean the gun. It was pretty dirty, so that was probably part of the, the issue before. So this is not an accuracy test. This is strictly a function test to see if, in fact, this little 238 will run these interceptors. It shouldn't be that hard.
primer hit good primer hit well decent primer hit but didn't discharge it around so I'm gonna try something a little different here gonna put that one round back in close the slide put a full magazine seven rounds in behind it and see if that's gonna make a difference here yeah, I won't say so much for my left-handed marksmanship with this little gun, but okay, it ran all the interceptors. My point to that is, we had some problems with the SIG 238 initially, and uh, it did redeem itself after cleaning. So then we went out of the Kimber Micro, which really should be the same as the 238, although the barrel was 5 hundredths of an inch longer. And again, all these barrels, different manufacturers making uh, their own barrels or having them made are all going to be a little bit different, even if the guns look the same. The Kimber Micro ran everything with no problem at all, about a 26% better energy rate at 218 foot-pounds with the uh, uh, 975 grain interceptor than we did with a 90 grain spear gold dot. Moved up to the Ruger LCP2 on the very first uh, round of the interceptor I did have to tap the back of the slide again. This gun's rather dirty, but after that it ran everything just fine. 19% better uh, energy at 204 foot-pounds compared to the, the gold dot. Then we moved on to the gun that I'm carrying a fair amount now that my right arm's not functioning fine, and that was to the Ruger um, uh, LCP Max. Now, uh, I was wearing gloves, so I did have to slingshot uh, this. I, I was trying to use a slide stop lever on most guns, um, but if, my, if I couldn't access it well with, uh, with gloved hands, then I did have to slingshot it. But it worked fine with all of those. Ran at 201 foot-pounds, which is 16% uh, better than the Spear Gold Dot. Moved on to the three point, excuse me, two point eight inch barrel Taurus Spectrum. I did a video on that a long time ago called the Taurus Stormtrooper because this one being black and white looks like a stormtrooper. However, uh, it shoots a whole lot better than most stormtroopers do. So neither here nor there. Had to slingshot the slide on all of those again because of gloved hands. It ran everything just fine. The uh, the PMC Gold, the uh, Spear Gold dot, and importantly, it ran the Interceptor seventy five grains, hundred percent, fifteen percent better energy at one hundred ninety three foot pounds. Went out of the Remington RM380. Again, I had to shoot this one without gloves just to make the trigger work. The uh, uh, last round on the interceptor failed to eject. Again, I think it's probably a dirty gun. And also the fact that um, I may not have been holding it. I'm doing everything left-handed because my right hand's not functioning, so at least not well. So uh, that may have been grip issue. My fault on that one. 18% better uh, energy at 206 foot-pounds. Again, that's out of a 2.9-inch barrel. Focusing then we went out of the we Sky go. CPX4. I did manage to use a slide stop on all those. It functioned every single round of the PMC, the uh, uh, Spear Gold Dot, and the Interceptors. 100% using the slide stop, no problem at all. 16% better energy, two, uh, 206 foot-pounds of energy out of that 2.96-inch barrel out of the Sky CPX4. Then we went on to the Sig 365. That's out of all these guns, that's uh, probably my favorite. Uh, um, everything worked fine with a slide stop instead of having to slingshot it. We got a 3.1 inch barrel on the 365 and 17% better energy than the Gold Dot at 217 foot pounds. Then we went on to the Glock 42. Now, my original Glock 42, I had lots of problems with, got rid of it. Got a, a slightly newer 42, but again, it's a few years old. Uh, couldn't work the slide stop with gloves, so I had to slingshot it, and uh, it did slingshot okay. The problem is I had a couple of fails to feed on, with the uh, interceptor. We'll talk about a caveat on that. Uh, stick around to the end, you because there is uh, one other thing with the, the Glock 42 that I do want to talk about. Then we moved on to the 3.4 inch barrel with the Ruger Security 380, and I do like that gun, by the way. Uh, first round of the PMC had to hit the slide. Um, after that, everything was fine. I used the slide stop on, on all the rounds. 18% better energy at 231 foot pounds compared to 196 foot pounds with the Spear Gold Dot. Then we went up to the 3.54 inch barrel on the Walther CCP M2. Interesting gun with a gas delayed uh, uh, action on it. Um, the first round of the PMC uh, round nose full metal jacket, I had I to slap the slide. To the uh, Spear Gold Dot, same thing. First round, I had uh, to slap to the slide. Round. With the uh, interceptor, uh, everything worked fine after that. Again, dirty, dirty gun. I haven't cleaned this in a long time. I, I will add that with both the uh, Spear Gold Dot and the interceptor, I managed to hit the 16 inch plate left handed at 50 yards with um, four out of, out of my five shots. 
And this one, uh, uh, the Walther actually had uh, really interesting energy at 235 foot-pounds of energy, 36% better than the uh, Spear Gold Dot. No complaints at all on that. Then we moved up to the 3.625 inch barrel of the Browning Black Label. They make that in two lengths. I got the shorter one, they all, I guess I call it a commander length. Now this is about a 7 8 scale uh, 1911 style pistol. Uh, I used the uh, slide stop on all of them rather than slingshot and it worked 100% on every round I put through it. About a 17% improvement in energy over the Spear Gold Dot. 252 foot pounds of energy out of the um, interceptor rounds. Then we moved on to the, uh, some people's favorite, the Shield EZ 3.675 inch barrel. Everything worked with a slide stop. About a 9% improvement in energy with the uh, Interceptor, 300, 231 foot pounds of energy uh, compared to the 211 on the Gold Dot. And we ended it up with a 3.75 inch barrel out of the Rock Island Baby Rock. And here's where we really had the problems. The, uh, the slide stop did chamber the rounds. However, the slide kept staying open. And we initially thought that that was a gun problem. But the closer uh, we looked at it, uh, the more we realized that the uh, actual shape of the bullet was pushing on the slide stop lever so that uh, it, when there was pressure on the uh, on the magazine with several rounds in it, uh, higher spring pressure, it was actually pushing the slide stop lever up. Uh, so it would require a little shaving of the slide stop lever, although then I don't know if that would work with the uh, uh, holding the last round open just with a follower on the magazine or not. So right now I'm going to call the uh, the Rock Island Baby Rock the only uh, only gun that did not work well with the interceptors. So conclusion on all this, as with any other gun, test your ammo in your gun. Even if you got the exact same gun that I've got and, and mine ran 100%, yours certainly may not do that. So test your gun and make sure any ammo you're going to run through it runs 100%, particularly for defensive ammo. Second thing is, the even though the uh, Interceptor is lighter, it had more energy than the, the heavier Gold Dot. Again, it's moving faster, but is that a good defensive round? And, and right now it looks like it is based on uh, the success of the Interceptor and other calibers. It certainly looks like it's uh, going to be a viable defense round. So again, look up the uh, Tau Fledermoss uh, channel. It's, uh, again, I, I'll put a link down there to his channel if I can. And uh, he's going to be doing, uh, may, may have already done it by the time this gets posted, uh, ballistic gel test with the 380 Interceptor. But again, I was mainly curious about would this function in every gun. So again, the Baby Rock is a non-starter. The Keltec, yeah, jury is still out on that. Uh, Tim seems to think that it was uh, probably the fact it was a dirty gun, and it may very well be. Glock 42, um, and again, I, I, I would not carry... In fact, I probably wouldn't carry the Glock 42 with a lot of defensive rounds anyway. I know I'm going to get the comments that, hey, your Glock 42 works 100% with everything you run through it, and that's fine. With mine, I had some issues with it. Uh, the DPM Systems Recoil, uh, DPM Systems is the manufacturer, makes a recoil system that's supposed to help with the, uh, the 42. And uh, we did try that out of a second 42 and uh, still had a couple of issues with it. But again, test it in your gun. So, out of my guns, remember, these are my guns in my conditions, uh, in my hands. You may have the exact same gun, yours may function totally different. But the bottom line to all this is, is the Interceptor 380 a viable defensive round at 75 grains? And yeah, it is. Now, is, this is advertised at 1200 feet per second again. Uh, if that's tested during warmer weather, that's going to be different. And you'll see the average on, uh, on mine only hit 1200 feet per second uh, average once we got to the uh, the Browning Black Label with the the longer barrel, but even then going to the Shield EZ with a slightly longer barrel yet, we couldn't quite get that 1200, although it was pretty close at 11, uh, 1177.8. So, oh, we also got the 1200 out of the, the Baby Rock uh, when it worked. So the longer barrel is going to help. Now these are designed for a 3.5 inch test barrel, or excuse me, 3.1 uh, inch test barrel. And once we got up to that 3.1, we were still just a little bit shy of 1,200, but again, I, I'm going to blame the weather on that. So, once again, viable defense round, absolutely, but test it in your gun. All right, they do function, and uh, I'm anxious to see how Tau Fluttermoss comes up with the ballistic performance in the gel for the 380. Thanks for staying with me.